You mentioned aerospike engines. I think uh, the internet uh, informed me of your love affair with aerospike engines. <laughs> Find somebody that looks at you the way Tim Na looks at aerospike engines. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you explain uh, what these are? How do they work? Um, what's beautiful to them? What, how practical are they? Why don't we use them? Oh my God. Uh, does it just boil down to the design of the nozzle? Uh, so maybe can you explain how is it possible to achieve this thing for an engine to be as efficient at uh, in a vacuum and sea level and, and all different conditions? You know what I love about this is yeah. that every question you've asked me is like a one hour video on my YouTube <laughs> exactly, channel. I was like, exactly. now boil it down to yeah. 45 seconds. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the Aerospike engine basically um, is an inside out engine, more or less. So with a traditional engine, you know, we're, we've talked about the combustion chamber and the throat, and then it expands out into the nozzle. Those walls are containing the pressure, right? An aerospike is the opposite. It's basically the pressure of the engine is on the outside of it and it's pushing inward against a spike. So it's it's almost like uh, it's like like the difference of if you were let me think about this. If you were standing in like a a tent or a teepee, right? And you put your arms at the top and you pushed your arms out like into an iron cross or something, you know. You can physically lift the tent just by pushing outwards on the tent walls, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that would be like a traditional nozzle. Now, an aerospike would be almost like squeezing an ice cube. You know, if you squeeze an ice cube, you can push in on it and kind of that wedge force will shoot that ice cube. So that's kind of what has happening. We have the high pressure gases on the outside of the spike, squeezing in on that spike and that's, and then it's pushing up against the, you know, cause it's equal on both sides against the kind of the ramp is pushing up against the rocket. So that's where that force comes in is against the nozzle against the chambers. The hard part with an aerospike. So the cool, okay, I guess, I guess the cool thing about an aerospike is that it can operate um, in space. You can have what's known as a really big expansion ratio. So that's your ratio between the throat, the area of the throat, versus the area of the nozzle exit. Mm -hmm. And remember how the bigger the nozzle is, the it's con continually just converting more and more. It's converting that high energy, hot, high pressure gas into a cooler and cooler, lower pressure, and faster gas. So each little millimeter along that nozzle is just getting it lower pressure and cooler, but faster. Now, if you take a big nozzle on Earth and you at sea level and you fire it, you can actually get, even though we're going from say 300 bar, the Raptor engine, um, you know, our atmosphere at sea level is about one bar. It's pretty much exactly one bar, <laughs> um, depending on conditions. But you can actually get a nozzle to get way below one bar of pressure. So every little, you know, you can go from 300 bar in just two meters down to one bar or below one bar. Wow. There's actually a limit. You can actually only expand it below, you know, we'll say something like 70%. So you can get down to like 0.7 bar at nozzle exit before the pressure of the atmosphere is actually squeezing in on that exhaust mm -hmm. and tearing it away from the walls of the engine the walls of the nozzle exit. Mm -hmm. And what happens is it's it's kind of unpredictable. You get these pockets, these oscillations, and they'll be so extreme that they'll end up just destroying the nozzle. So you can't lower, you can't have a bigger expansion ratio than again, relatively speaking, something like 0.7. Like you can't go below, you can't get that pressure exit too much below ambient air pressure before flow separation can destroy the engine. So, so. how come this engine can do so well in, in, uh, in different pressure conditions? So because it's inside out, mm -hmm. the ambient pressure is pushing the exhaust gas into the wall, mm -hmm. as opposed to a conventional engine that exhaust gas or the ambient air is actually squeezing the exhaust gas away from the walls of the engine. And that squeezing away from is what can be destructive. So that since, the in, since it's kind of inside out, the ambient air is pushing the exhaust gas into the engine walls, so you can't have flow separation. You won't have flow separation. Now, what happens is, so you can have this huge, amazingly like efficient vacuum engine that's that has a, we'll say a 200 to one expansion ratio, which is really big. Like a lot of sea level engines are like 35, 40, 50 to one expansion ratios. And then in space, you know, it's common to use like 150, 180, 200 to one expansion ratios. So an aerospike can have something like 200 to one, it's just that the, at sea level, it's kind of just getting pushed and it's kind of getting cut off early almost, but it doesn't matter. It's not like destructive. It's just not running at its maximum efficiency. As it climbs in altitude, as the ambient air gets thinner and thinner and thinner, it just inherently is pushing less and less and less against the walls of that aerospike engine. So it actually continually gets more efficient at 
you know, as it climbs in altitude, as, as does the normal engine. But the difference is that you can use that huge expansion ratio at sea level, and you can't use a huge expansion ratio at sea level with a tradition, traditional nozzle. Has that anyone actually flown on an aerospike engine? No aerospike engine to date has ever been flown on an orbital rocket. Why not? And would you like to see a future where they're used? <laughs> purely, uh, do, yeah. purely because I think they're cool. Yeah. You know, in the same so that's, way. That's the, at the core of your love affair with aerospike engines. Is it's the just, and, and I said this in my video, actually, I, they're outside before I came in here, I saw uh, an RX-7 on, in the streets that I just love. And that uses a rotary engine. On paper, the rotary engine is like, more efficient, does all, you know, smaller, more efficient, all these things. But in practice, it's like, the thing is actually just like unreliable, hot, and it, you know, it, it blah, 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 burns oil. It's kind of the same thing with the aerospike engine. Like, yes, on paper, it's more efficient, but now you have a lot more surface area of your, 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 your throat area, no matter what is going to have, uh, the, the throat of the, of the rocket engine is always where it's the hottest, you know, it's the hardest thing to cool. And with an aerospike, if, you know, if it's inside out, now your throat is no matter what, like way bigger, you know, it's almost like the size of the nozzle exit normally, but now it's your hardest thing to cool and you have a ton of it. And you also have two edges of it, no matter what. So even if you have like a, you know, a circle inside a circle, you have like a just insane amount more surface area to cool with a limited amount of fuel. Don't forget you're using your fuel mm -hmm. as your, as your coolant. So if you all of a sudden now take your throat area and you have, um, X amount of space that you need to cool, you only have, you have a limited supply. It's, it's like, oh, it's, sorry, this is the stuff that just- Are there, are there ideas of for cooling, um, of, of, of for cooling aerospike engines? It's it the same physics apply for an aerospike as they would. So you just run into, you just run into a limitation. Like at some point, I'm not flowing enough propellant. My, it, it scales, it scares, scales kind of poorly. You know what I mean? Like you can increase the thrust of an aerospike by making it bigger and increase the mass flow and the fuel going through the throats. Um, or the throat, but at the same time, like it just, it's at the end of the day, it's physically possible. It's a lot more complex. You have a lot of issues with cooling and it just, you end up kind of right back where you started. So it's like, is it worth it to just keep going down this rabbit hole? You're trying to engineer this thing to work when like you could have probably spent a 10th the amount of time, just slightly increasing the performance of your normal engine in the first place, you know? Again, I'm going to anthropomorphize uh, that that lesson and apply it to my dating life. I, and once again, just kidding. <laughs>